Hey guys, help me to reach 1000 subscribers. We are so close, let's continue the video. In June 2016, Michelle Hadley, a 29-year-old woman, was on her way home after meeting a friend. However, to her surprise when she reached home, she was greeted by a team of police officers waiting outside her house. She was being arrested because she had allegedly threatened another woman named Angela Diaz. The curious part of this arrest was that Michelle claimed she had no idea who Angela Diaz was. Could this arrest have been a mistake, or could the two have been acquainted before? In the events that took place after Michelle's arrest, the truth about the two women revealed some shocking revelations. These revelations would only make you wonder how far can you go with a single lie. Hi, and welcome to M7 Crime Story Time, where we cover solved, unsolved, and twisted cases. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to get the latest crime stories delivered directly to your inbox. In today's case, we're gonna be diving into a bizarre and twisted tale that concerns two women, Michelle Hadley and Angela Diaz. This is Michelle Hadley. She was born on December 20th, 1986, in Upland, California. Michelle was the eldest daughter of her parents, who were business owners. She grew up with a sister who's three years younger than her. Michelle was raised in a strict conservative home and shared a close relationship with her parents. Growing up, she had a pretty normal life. During her time at school and college, her friends knew her as a polite and kind person. Michelle was also known for being very outspoken and straightforward with what she had to say. However, she would always find ways to clear the air if there were any disagreements. Being a diligent girl since she was little, she always made sure to complete every task that was given to her. Throughout her high school days, she was in a relationship with just one person. Though we don't have information about his name or background, we do know that the two were together for a long time. In 2008, the two decided to get married. However, Michelle didn't realize that marriage would not bring her the happiness she sought. Four years into their marriage, things started to fall apart. Things didn't feel like they did back when they started dating, and they decided to split up. This devastated Michelle. She believed that love just wasn't in the cards for her until 2013 when she met another man, Ian Diaz. Though we don't have much information about his past, we do know that he's nine years older than Michelle. The two reportedly met through a dating site. Things with Ian felt like they were meant to be, at least for Michelle. Ian was working as a deputy U.S. marshal, while Michelle was working at a marketing firm. Ian seemed attentive to her needs and very loving. These characteristics drew Michelle in, and not long after, by the fall of 2014, they moved in together. Ian then proposed to Michelle, and they set a date for their wedding. Michelle and Ian seemed to hit it off very well during the start of their marriage. However, as sweet as the relationship looked from the outside, Ian slowly turned into something Michelle never foresaw. Michelle always saw Ian as an attentive and sweet-natured man. But as time passed, he soon became a self-loathing and abusive person. This took Michelle aback since she had a hard time realizing these changes at first. She noticed his changes in behavior but considered them more of an act of love. There were times when he'd asked her to wear more revealing clothes. However, Michelle, being from a conservative family, found this request very uncomfortable. Nevertheless, she complied with Ian's requests. When Ian saw that Michelle could be easily persuaded, he started making more provocative requests. Soon, he asked her to get her belly button pierced. At first, she hesitated, but later agreed. By this time, Ian was pushing the boundaries. His requests started to get even more bizarre. Ian had asked Michelle to leave the job at a marketing firm that she loved and take up a job at his favorite place, Disneyland. Disneyland was not only the place that he loved, but it had also been the place where he worked before he got his job as a deputy U.S. marshal. It seemed as though Ian wanted to keep an eye on Michelle. So working at a place where he still had contacts was a good deal for him. When he presented the idea to her, 
He said that he wanted her to be in safer hands, but that only meant that he could watch over her every move. At first, Michelle found this request a little odd, but because she loved him and wanted to appease her husband, she obliged. By the time the request started to make Michelle feel troubled, it was too late. She saw herself becoming someone she wasn't. So she thought of talking it over with her husband, but instead of hearing her out, he lashed out and turned abusive. During this time of turmoil, Michelle and Ian decided to purchase a condo together. They naively thought that having a home that belonged to them would help make their relationship better. This was about two years after they met. In 2015, Michelle and Ian started searching for a condo and finally found one that was located in downtown Anaheim. This condo was priced at $470,000. Though it was a little beyond their means, they wanted it. But at that time, Michelle was unaware that Ian had no plans to pay even a single dime toward the mortgage. When it was time to put the money up, he made up an excuse saying he was having a hard time with finances, but he promised to pay for the next month. Michelle then decided to go ahead with the down payment, which was about $44,000 in cash. After sorting through all the paperwork, things seemed to be sorted. In hindsight, their relationship had already reached a dead end. So with the purchase of the condo, things started to get worse. While both of their names were on the deed, it was evident that Ian wanted the condo for himself. Michelle wasn't having it though since she was the only one paying the mortgage. At one point, when the two of them were together in the car, they got into a fight that turned violent. Ian raised his hand to Michelle, causing her to sustain slight injuries. After this, Michelle wrote an email to her sister telling her everything that was happening. Sadly, however, she never sent it. By the end of the summer of 2015, almost two months after purchasing the condo, Michelle decided to leave the condo to stay with her parents. However, even though she'd left Ian with the condo, she was still paying the mortgage. In fact, Ian continued to skip the mortgage payments, and this infuriated Michelle. At this time, she'd left her high-paying job and was still working at Disneyland, which she hated. She was also earning less than what she was used to. Instead of giving in to her anger, she politely asked Ian about the condo mortgage payments. However, instead of replying, he simply ignored her emails, calls, and texts. This pushed Michelle over the line. She decided to confront him directly. Ian then stated that he never intended on paying the mortgage. Michelle was furious about this. Looking at the situation she was in, she didn't know what to do. She sent Ian a rather strongly worded email saying that things wouldn't look good for him if he continued with the behavior. This email made Ian furious, and he filed a restraining order against Michelle. However, he never got full support from the police since he was also at fault. Michelle found out about Ian's restraining order request and quickly countered it with the fact that he never paid the mortgage on the condo since they bought it together, and it was in their name. Eventually, the two of them agreed to hire property lawyers and settled the issue for good. When the judgment was made, the judge sided with Michelle. Ian was ordered to pay the rest of the mortgage. And if he failed to do so, he'd have to pay an additional penalty. The judgment obviously upset Ian, but he had no choice but to follow the court order. It took a whole year for this mess to get sorted out. By 2016, the two had separated for good. Michelle was now finally free of this toxic relationship. While Michelle was turning over a new page in her life, Ian was still quite bitter. He was still living in the condo and paying the mortgage. The whole condo situation took a toll on him. In an effort to pick up the pieces of his life, he started using dating apps once again. This was how Ian met the woman he thought was his perfect match, Angela Connell. Though we don't have much information about her, we do know that she was born in 1985 and is from Phoenix, Arizona. Angela attended a Catholic high school and then graduated from Arizona State University in 2006. When Ian met Angela in January 2016, they both felt an instant spark. Within a month, Ian proposed, 
and soon Angela moved into Ian's condo. It seemed as if Angela and Ian were destined to be together. By May 2016, Angela announced that she was pregnant with twins. Ian was overjoyed to hear the news. Everything seemed to be falling into place for the soon-to-be parents until an anonymous email started creating havoc. Angela received a threatening email that said, You're not the right person for Ian. This message took Angela aback, and she considered that it might have been from her ex. Before Angela married Ian, she briefly dated a man named Jason Raven. However, their relationship did not end well. Naturally, she thought of him as soon as she received this anonymous message. But there was one thing that didn't seem right. When Angela broke it off with Jason, she made sure to cut off all contact with him. So it was impossible for him to know about her new relationship. It just wasn't adding up. Meanwhile, Ian and Angela continued to stay at the condo that was bought by Michelle. One day, Ian brought up the topic of the condo while he was talking to Angela, and then she finally realized that it might have been Michelle who sent that anonymous email. Soon, Angela began receiving more emails from six different accounts. All of them had the same message but with different wording. Curious to find out who the sender of these emails might be, she replied to one of them and asked the identity of the sender. To her shock, she received a reply claiming the sender was Michelle Hadley. Angela told her to stop contacting her, but the emails didn't stop. The next few emails that she started to get made her feel threatened and worried for her life. After reading them, Angela didn't want to take a chance but rushed to file a restraining order against Michelle. This happened on June 1, 2016. In her statement, Angela mentioned that the emails she'd received from Michelle made her strongly feel fear and anxiety. She told the police officers that she was scared of leaving her home because of the threats that were in those emails that Michelle had sent. She also added that she was fearful of being attacked and killed if she stepped out of her home. After seeing the gravity of the situation, the court then immediately granted the restraining order against Michelle. It was during the month of June 2016, and Michelle seemed to have moved on from the toxicity of her previous relationship. Sometime during the month, she went out to meet a friend and was coming back home. But when she only entered her driveway, she was met by a team of police officers. Michelle was dumbfounded. Still, without a struggle, she obliged with a restraining charge and was then taken in for questioning. During the interrogation, Michelle was asked if she knew Angela and also about the series of her email threats. To this, she replied that she had, in fact, never heard of Angela and was clueless about the emails that were continuously being mentioned by the officers. She even told the police officers that she was being set up because she'd received a Google alert a week before that her email address had been shut down. On the same day, she received an alert from Microsoft saying that her primary email was being used as the recovery email for a bunch of other email addresses that she'd never created. That troubled her, but she made it a point to contact the Anaheim Police Department to report the matter. She believed that it was her ex-husband who may have been impersonating her. But despite her efforts, no one listened to her. On the other hand, the police officers thought that Michelle was just lying. They didn't take her words into consideration. So now, Michelle was served with a restraining order. But what Michelle did not know was that this was just the beginning. This is where things started to get even crazier. With Michelle charged with a restraining order, you might think that the situation had been settled, but it wasn't. Not long after Angela started receiving emails in response to a Craigslist ad that she'd never posted. These ads had details soliciting a sexual coercion fantasy. Shocked by this, Angela knew that someone must have opened an account in her name. But the strange thing was, whoever it was, they had her exact details. These details included her phone number, the full address of the condo, and even the breed of the dog she had. But no one else would know the entire address of the condo apart from Ian and Michelle. She thought that it couldn't have been Ian. Upon pondering this idea, Angela once again started to feel scared to death. 
She didn't even want to go out of her house because whoever it was knew where she lived. She felt like she was being continuously watched. And not knowing who could have done it made her feel uneasy. Days after the Craigslist ad, on the 24th of June 2016, Angela called the police. However, it was not because of the ad. This time, she was attacked. Her neck was bruised, and the clothes she was wearing had been ripped. Her head had also been slammed against the wall, but still, Angela found the strength to call 911. The police then asked Angela if she recognized the person who assaulted her, and that was when Angela replied, It was Michelle. This time, the police made sure to arrest Michelle. They thought a restraining order wasn't enough to keep her from harming Angela. Michelle was arrested. While in jail, she managed to relay the message about her arrest to her parents. And since being from a conservative family, they did everything they could to handle the matter. Michelle's bail was set at $10,000, and since her parents were successful business owners, they managed to quickly bail her out. Once she was out, Angela started receiving harassing emails again. It couldn't have been Michelle. Right. Well, the interesting part was the emails that were sent to Angela actually did come from Michelle's personal email address. Not long after the tragic assault on Angela, on July 13th, she contacted 911 again. This time, it was because she saw a man standing outside her condo. When the police arrived and talked to the unknown stranger, the person said he was actually responding to the same sexually explicit Craigslist ad in the name of Angela Diaz. Curious to know who might have posted the ad, the police searched for the origin of the account. It led straight to Michelle once again. Could Michelle have actually lied about all of this to the police, or was it someone else who was using Michelle's name? The next day, on the 14th of July, police arrested Michelle once again. And this time, they set her bail at $1 million. Her parents couldn't afford to pay such a large amount. Michelle vehemently denied sending the emails or creating the Craigslist ads. Her parents believed Michelle because they knew she wasn't the type to send threats to anyone. Michelle's parents then decided to hire a lawyer because they thought that whomever was playing this game could keep getting their daughter arrested. While Michelle was jailed for the second time, the threats and emails aimed at Angela again ceased. Three months passed, and everything seemed peaceful for Angela. Meanwhile, Michelle's parents were trying their best to find out who the anonymous person was posing as Michelle. To get to the bottom of it, they needed to know who had access to her records. They pulled data, school records, hospital records, and more to find if there were any loopholes. This was where they found crucial evidence. Michelle was hospitalized in June, and the first emails were sent on the same day of her hospitalization. Michelle couldn't have sent those emails herself. This piece of information gave hope to Michelle's parents. Michelle's father also downloaded a ton of software to track the IP addresses of the emails that were being sent since they were encrypted addresses. Then one day, Michelle's parents received a surprising phone call that said Michelle was getting bailed. Who would bail Michelle out for a million dollars? It turned out that the person who bailed out Michelle was none other than Ian. On the 30th of September 2016, Ian went to the police officers and presented a $1 million bail for Michelle's release. Michelle and her family were in disbelief. As to how Ian obtained this amount of cash, that has not been explained. Why would he bail her out? Did he suddenly have regrets for treating her badly, or was there something more to the story? After Michelle was bailed out, obviously, Michelle and her family wanted the answers to these questions. Surprisingly, Ian then revealed the truth. Ian claimed that Angela had supposedly framed Michelle for sending those threatening emails that she'd been sending threatening emails to herself via proxy email addresses that she made using Michelle's name. Angela even went further by posting Craigslist stats, which were believed to have been made by Michelle. In those ads, the details she entered could only have been known by Ian and herself. Additionally, on the 24th of June 2016, when she was found in her garage all bruised up, 
It was actually Angela who inflicted the injuries on herself, and Ian had found the CCTV footage to prove it. Ian revealed that this wasn't the only thing Angela had lied about. She had, in fact, a history of making things up. Ian found out that Angela had been lying since the first day they met. She'd even lied about her pregnancy. Ian found evidence that Angela had allegedly bought a sonogram of twins off of Etsy for $7.50. She even bought a positive pregnancy test kit to back up her lie. But why would Angela want to ruin Michelle's life? Well, it all started back in 2015 when Ian and Angela met. During that time, Ian would often talk about Michelle and the condo incident. This was when Angela got curious about Michelle and started digging up her past. While doing so, Angela found that Michelle actually came from a good and wealthy background. This piece of information made Angela think of Michelle as a jackpot. Ian, on the other hand, who was married to Michelle, wanted his revenge for the whole condo situation. You see, the condo incident left a scar on Ian. He was furious about having to pay for the mortgage after Michelle's countersuit. So the two of them then hatched a plan to bring Michelle down. Ian provided Angela with Michelle's email address, and the two of them plotted to frame Michelle and get her arrested. To conceal their evil plan, Angela and Ian created different email addresses to talk to each other. They then made six different accounts using VPNs in Michelle's name. Remember when Michelle spoke to the police officers about Google alerts regarding the email addresses she never created? Well, it was Angela all along. When Michelle got a restraining order, Angela wasn't happy because she wanted Michelle gone for good. That was when she devised a plan to take this to a whole new level. She created a fake profile on Craigslist and used Michelle's identity to make her first ad in which she invited men over to her own house for a sexual coercion fantasy. However, the inconsistencies in the scenario that the two planned out made Ian confess all about his wife, thus framing her in the process. He was apparently unaware of how far she would take things. Now that everything was out in the open, the police obtained a search warrant for all Angela's devices. Shockingly, when they went through Angela's things, they found all of Ian's claims were in fact true. They found a total of 21 threatening emails, and most of them were actually sent from Angela and Ian's condo. When the police dug up the locations of the other emails that were supposedly sent to Angela, they found that some of them were also sent from Arizona. When they dove deeper, they realized during that time Angela had actually traveled to Arizona to see her father. After these shocking discoveries, investigators began to look into Angela's background. This was when they found out that this wasn't the first time she committed such an act. Back in 2013, Angela had committed similar crimes when she was dating Jason Rayburn, a state trooper from California. During their relationship, Angela claimed that she was an attorney and had been diagnosed with cervical cancer. However, as time passed, things didn't seem to add up with regards to Angela's diagnosis and her work. This made Jason suspicious, and he started digging deeper. Shockingly, he soon discovered that Angela had faked both her cancer and her career. Obviously, this ended things with Jason. On January 6, 2019, nearly three years after the truth was made public, Angela was detained for her crimes. The Orange County District Attorney's Office made sure to clear Michelle's name. And three days later, Michelle's record of causing a threat to life and assault was finally cleared. Speaker 3, the most traumatic experience of my life, and I'm glad it's finally over. Speaker 1, Angela pleaded guilty to 10 felonies, including false imprisonment and perjury. She received a five-year prison term. Michelle is still reminded of the wrongful conviction and the time when she was jailed. When she was arrested, she had to drop her MBA classes and she lost her job. Speaker 3. So I think as far as my close circle, it's not gonna be hard to rebuild my reputation. And I'm hoping that that kind of it just grows from there. Speaker 1. But now since being cleared of all charges, Michelle has slowly started to get back on her feet. 
She finally earned her MBA and landed a good job in field marketing for a cosmetics company. Michelle then moved to New York to live with her sister, and things had never been better. Ian, on the other hand, separated from Angela and later sold the condo for $500,000. But in 2021, Ian was charged with a number of offenses for allegedly planning and carrying out the crazy plot to frame Michelle. In addition to receiving a five-year prison sentence, he was charged with one count each of perjury, cyberstalking, and conspiracy to commit cyberstalking. If only the investigators and police officers had looked into the whole situation a little more closely, maybe this wouldn't have gotten as far as it did. What do you think about this case? What could have possibly been going through Angela and Ian's minds when they hatched this plan? Do you feel that Michelle was fully vindicated in the end? Let us know your thoughts on this in the comments section below.